All right. We look a little decent this morning. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up. Shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have most respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the driver. Shout out to the Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery drivers, round town and long distance truck drivers. Shout out to the crossing guards. Shout out to the school teachers. Shout out to the students going out to school. Shout out to law enforcement personnel, medical field personnel. Shout out to whatever your job description is. Shout out to you. Shout out to every single clean hearted, good hearted person who wants good for others. As much as you want good for yourself, you're a good person. Don't let that go over your head. Shout out to you. Here we are on this beautiful Monday morning. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm still going through my thingy thing with the throat thing. You know, it's getting better, but it's not better yet. But we're still functioning and we're functioning better than before, right? I don't know if you could tell. I went in the sun and get bun up. You ever see a hot dog get extra crispy? That's what happened to me. <laughs> Going out in the sun. I don't know what's up with the sun. Voice sounds strong, King Biggs. The voice is coming back. It's coming back. It's not. It's not quite back as yet, but it's it's coming back. I don't have any more pain in my throat when I swallow. I'm thankful for that. I was worried about uh, for a long time about that one. You know I'm there already. I think the worst are the worst, right? Right. But things are getting better slowly. I'm realizing that you have to give yourself time to heal. You know. My Haitian brethren uh, said to me the other day, he said, we're not 20 anymore, man. <laughs> he was like, we're not 20 anymore, man. Because, you know, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to heal up in like 24 hours, 48 hours. And I saw Smokey Robinson yesterday. Smokey Robinson said, listen, in your 20s, you know, you go to bed, you fall down, you hurt your hand, you go to bed. You wake up the next day, your hand is good, ready to go. In your 40s, you didn't do nothing. You just went to bed. You woke up the next day, your hand hurting like you fell down. You didn't fall anywhere. You just woke up <laughs> with your hand hurting. So I guess it takes longer to heal now than uh, usually or before. Either way, Medea, may I drink up, me Right now I have some ginger and eucalyptus in my cup. And that's what I'm on this morning. The eucalyptus tea has really been working. You know, getting all that nasty stuff up out of my system. Some really nasty stuff too. I, I might add. I might add. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. But I'm here, man. I'm. I'm. Be. I'm thankful. I have a. I have a lozenger in my mouth. I will try not to let it affect my speech because I still do have a cough, and I don't want to be talking to you this morning and start <laughs> all like that. So I'm trying to keep the throat area uh, lubricated. So the dry throat thing kick in and I don't start coughing all over this microphone and interrupting our conversation. But I ask that you understand, right, that that's going on. Human, some people come and expect perfection. Them don't want your cough. Somebody actually left that in the comment section the other day. Why don't you stop coughing all over the mic and stop coughing on? So I'm like, I took the time to explain to you that I have a cold. Shout out to the people who jump on them for me. I took the time to explain to you that I have a cold or I have something going on here that we can't figure out what it is. My whole family has it, by the way. My my kids were here uh, for the weekend. The big boys were here for the weekend. And every single person has it. And I think now, wifey has it as well. And, you know, she's like, me not mess with you no more. Because I was kissing her up and everything. I actually was trying to give it to her. I was. I don't know if you grow like how me grow, but my granny, when one person catch chicken pox, my granny used to make sure that she lock everybody in the room, so everybody, <laughs> so everybody catch chicken pox. So when and it was six, six of us as children in the house. So when one child caught something, chicken pox, grandma lock everybody in the same room, and everybody end up get them chicken pox one time. And done with it. And mumps and all these other things. I don't know if y'all remember all uh, that having mumps. I had mumps. I had chicken pox. I had, I've had it all. 
So I was trying to give it to wifey too, so that the whole we can have it one time and get over it. And I think I was successful because she woke up yesterday, Bex, and she was like, oh, my throat feel like somebody did not stab me with a knife in it. So I think, <laughs> I think I was successful at giving it to her as well. <laughs> Tell me. Oh, that's open this morning. Okay. Come on in, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for being here. This will be the only day the chat will be open for the rest of the week. The chat will be open only for the people who are in green. You don't know how that go already. You want then at the chat every morning, get your membership. If not, then so on and so forth. One more thing I got to share before we go into our topics. We have quite a few topics to discuss this morning. Parenting is so fun, man. Last night, me and wife and daddy sitting on the couch. We're taking in a movie, right? Movie evening. You know that go already. Netflix and chill kind of thing. And Kai, my little man, he's up there working on... Kai's always working on some kind of project. He's good with Legos. He has like a million pieces of Legos and always I put stuff together. I thought that's what he was doing. The movie done. And I look up. And I noticed that the middle of his head has no hair. So I did. A, I'm like, is it the light in the kitchen? Or, you know, at first I was like, is it the lighting? Or did he part his hair with his fingers or something like that? The man used a scissor. One of his little scissors. It went right down the middle of his head. And just peel it out, peel it out. <laughs> so now, now it look like we're a senior citizen. Huh? And I, grabbed, I was like, what did you do to your hair? Him start ball, right? Immediately, him just, ah. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not going to do anything to you, man. It's your hair. You look funny as hell. Go to your mom. <laughs> so I got to his mother. His mom, his mom is sitting there. She was like, we couldn't do nothing. You know, stuff like that, you just have to laugh, right? But remember when my mom did that to my hair and it wasn't fun because it wasn't me that did it. And I wasn't small either. <laughs> look, the man looked like a senior citizen, Reggie. The man does nyam out the middle of his own head like this. Nowhere else, just straight down the middle. One patch like broad, like three fingers broad, right down the middle of his head. So I'm, I got to go get him my haircut today. But that's the joys of parenting. Quick story. My mom used to dress me for go school, right? I, I told you all this before. I grew up pretty sheltered. I don't know who the ninja on the street. <laughs> I grew up pretty sheltered. My mom used to dress me to go to school. I used to hate it because I'm like, yo, I'm 14. I could dress myself, right? This is embarrassing. I'm, I'm trying to assimilate into American culture. Jeez, I've been here since I was eight. This woman still addressed me like, no, you're going to dress how I want you to dress. And All right. She dressed me up for go to school. And I, as I get older... I start to like find things, ways to make myself look good at school. When me think the girl them want to see, see? So I stole, I went, we used to live in an apartment building down on Miami Beach. And the apartment had like seven floors. I went up to the top floor one day and going to the laundry room. I missed two tracksuits in there. TV, TV people them close. See? So I saw two tracksuits in there, top and bottom match. Take out the two tracksuit them outside. Wet clothes, you know, tea people wet clothes. Take out the two tracksuit them, put them in our bag, run back down the stairs. All right, all the way back down the first floor, me live. Mind you, I could wear these, but me can't wear them round where me live. That means I could only wear these when I go to school. Because my mother dropped me to school in the morning, you know, so she dropped me off. Me supposed to look how she dropped me off. I'll just go in the bathroom and change, right? My hair, my hair had to be how she wanted my hair to be. Carry notice, big up yourself. My hair have to be how my mother want my hair for me. So she dropped me go to school, regular youth, right? Bye, honey, love you, see you later, blah, blah. We used to walk home, but she used to drop us to school in the morning on her way to work. So she dropped me at school this particular day. Now me, go put on my track suit, put on tracks, even though I didn't have the shoes to match. She put on me, put on my track suit, still have on the cowboy boot that was she did. I was trying to be fresh. Still have on the cowboy boot that with the track suit. Didn't look good. But I it looked better than what she put me in in my mind. My hair, I get a can of temporary coloring. And 
me twist up one side of me here. A fashion me I do, you know, twist up one side of me here and the other side of me here, you know, me pick it out like this with a comb and spray it. Spray a blonde on one side and dreadlocks looking twisted up on the other side of my hair. I'm fresh, right? Why did I forget to take this out of my hair when I was leaving to go? <laughs> when me I left to go, I'm seeing, I, I, and I'm going to figure out, I said, okay, I'm going to hurry up and get home and change, wash out this thing out of my hair before my mother. And I stopped at the park. And they were playing basketball at the park. Me never play basketball. Me, I watch them play, but I'm chilling at the park, right? And the park is right next to where I live. My mother don't normally come home these hours. Me uncle hear somebody ball out my name. Come here! I look, and it was my mom sitting in our white car. We said, Jesus Christ. She was like, come in the car! So we go in the car, right? What, me, what else me I going to do? She was like, I saw me send you to school this morning. Is this how I sent you to school this morning? I said, no, mommy. She was like, all right. Now say another word. She drive, go home. Go on up into the house. Run, go upstairs. You know, you know, you know, you know, problem. When me reach into the house, this, the woman I said nothing about my tracksuit. I thought she was talking about my clothes and all that. Mm -mm, Cause different outfit she's to me now. I know that she had talked about, she had talked about me here, to up on one side and dyed blonde on the other side. My mom had a scissor, a big scissors where she used cut cloth. And something there. She said, pass me the scissors. Um, me I look for the scissors, you know. And I'm like, pass her, which scissors? I kill, she gonna kill me. Me don't know, cause she seemed very angry, like she's going to stab me. And what she gonna do with scissors? You know, uh, Kai's haircut last night remind me of that. Me I said, what she gonna do with the scissors? Pass me the scissors, boy. So me grab the scissors and pass the scissors gear, like I'm passing my own death instrument. I'm about to be murdered. The lady do like this, near stab after my head top. And I put my hand up like this, and my mom jumped my hand <laughs> with the scissors. She jumped me out with it. Move your hand out of the way. I moved my hand out the way. She went right down the middle of my hair, just like Kai. Mwah, 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 mwah. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> Peel out the hole of my head, Miguel. So I'm standing there now with half a blonde around her back, yeah, so half a two around her back, yeah, so and no hair all in the middle of my head like this. My uncle came over. Uh, a couple hours later, my uncle see me and my uncle was like, oh, God darn, man. I said, <laughs> why are you doing me here like that? I catch the boy at the park earlier uh, with hair, twist up and blonde hair. And I just said, I sent him to school this morning. I just said, I sent him to school this morning. So my uncle was like, oh, God, let me carry him go get him a haircut. <laughs> and she was like, all right, carry him go on. <laughs> so my uncle took me to a barber shop. Back when 183rd Street Flea Market from in Miami, that's so, used to be popping. It's no longer there. And he carried me over there, so go get my first official haircut. My hair was so low, was she cut with the scissors. Them couldn't give me nothing but a really, really low haircut. But it was the first time I got designs uh, going around. Because my uncle was like, oh, God, you, you have age now, man. My sister, yeah, I try to look fresh and all that. So let me give you something. I met the girl, them look by you. So I tell the barber to put some designs going around like this, and the barber did. So I came back fresher than before, kind of thing. <laughs> but but that's what Kai haircut remind me of. My mother dig out the middle of my head like this. Ah, oh man. Anyhow, after these topics that we have this morning, soldiers from Belize and the Bahamas are in Jamaica for military training, getting ready to deploy into Haiti and barbecue sends a message y'all know who barbecue is right we'll get into that in a minute there's a 68 year old woman that went missing and she was last seen in a bus park and i just want to put her picture up here because enough people watch me and somebody might see her i said oh see her there and call our people them right uk member of parliament diane abbott versus head of the phoenix partnership tpp frank hester who is contracted to implement Jamaica's NIDS program or electronic health records. That is coming off of Friday. One of our, one of our family members who I value very much called in and said, so Flo, talk about that, remember? And I said, I will go do some research on it and then we can talk about it later. So that's what we're going to talk about. And there was a UK resident who was gunned down at his brother's wake in Jamaica 
We're going to talk a little about that as well. And then Erlene Tucker, another one of our valued family members, last weekend said, So Flo, talk about the Erlene Tucker woman from out of Florida. And we have the story right here as well. So those are the things we're talking about this morning. The leader of the gang in Haiti, Karen Notice. Yes, the leader of the gang in Haiti. So let's run right down our list. Before we go any further, let's put this lady's picture up first in case anybody see her. Um, Y'all remember Bunny Whaler, right? Uh, Bunny Whaler, Bob Marley and the Whalers, Bob Marley brother, even though they weren't brother by... But they were. as Yeah, anyway. Bunny Whaler wife. Did they ever find Bunny Whaler's wife? I think the answer is no. Bunny Whaler's wife walked away from home and was never seen again. And she was never found up until Bunny passed away. And she still has never ever been found. This is I don't know if because this lady has her head wrapped in these this rasta wrap. What make me feel like. But I hope she's found. Right, and I don't know if we're gonna do justice with her picture on here. Let's see, right there. But I don't know if this is gonna do it no justice, but we'll try. So I'm gonna hold it up here for a couple of seconds so people can take a good look at her. Somebody might see her out there and say, Oh my god, I just saw her, or something like that. And I hope that she returns home safely. I hope by the time this gets out there that she's watching it herself from home and say, me I hope good things, that she's watching it from home and saying, me not miss a man, me all right, right? But that's her. All right. And according to the story that follows her, it says that she is from Falmouth. It says the Falmouth police are seeking the public's assistance to locate a 68-year-old woman by the name of Lana White of Falmouth Trelawney. She has been missing for the last two weeks. Um, one thing we know about Jamaica is this. You can go missing for a couple of hours. You might even go missing for a couple of days. But two weeks of missing is a long time of missing. The prognosis is slim. Uh, might not be among the living anymore so to speak we hope that that's not the case in her case she's been missing for two weeks she has been missing since the 16th of march she um she's a brown complexion she's medium built as they describe her and reports from the police are that she was last seen at the ultra rios bus park in the parish wearing a pink pants white blouse and she has not been seen or heard from since. Anyone knowing her whereabouts, Lana White is her name, asked to contact the Falmouth, Falmouth Police or just simply contact any law enforcement official out of Jamaica and say your piece. But she's been missing for two weeks. Not a good look. Not a good look at all. They didn't. You know, there's no updated information to her as well. I wish I wish they would go talk to the family, see if uh, she is it somebody that has early onset of dementia? Is it somebody that troubles with mental health issues? Was she a depressed person? Is she? You understand? You know, get what me I go with this, right? Right. Anything that would make her want to just disappear. Anything like that. Give me a little lead, a little something, an understanding of something. Because people don't just pick up and go missing for two weeks. So, Lana, if you're out there and you see this and you just want it to be left alone, please come forward and say so. Your family is worried sick. Even though sometimes at the same family we're worried sick, is the same family make you want to run where left them and never contact them again. But I'm hoping in your case that wherever you are, my dear, that you are fine. Right? So that's a better look of, of her right there. And she's been missing for two weeks and counting since March 16th. Today is April 1st. Last seen in Ocharius Bus Park. Pink pants, white shirt, never seen or heard from again. Hmm. All right. Think I've left her up there long enough. 
And if you see her or know anything, you know what to do. Right? All right. All right, moving right along. I think the first one we need to talk about this morning, what you say, is the soldiers, them, uh, Jamaican soldiers and other soldiers are gathered in Jamaica right now, getting ready to go into Haiti. I think this is a big deal. Uh, soldiers from Belize, Bahamas, and somewhere else, it just says Belize and Bahamas so far. Members of the Royal Bahamian Defense Force and Belize Defense Force are now in Jamaica for a training exercise that is dubbed Trogon Shield that will see them integrating with Jamaica's police and soldiers for a CARICOM Joint Task Force. The Joint Contingency Training Exercise is based, will be hosted by the Jamaican government in partnership with the Canadian government and it will run until April 26th. On the dumb, but I leave no straight picnic down there. Y'all know how I go already. Soldiers go over here to train, and next thing you know, them buck up in a couple of Jamaican loose gal and women that love men in uniform. And before you know it, that soldier is never seen on that island again because he's from Belize or Bahamas. And then be a be born and don't know who him daddy is. And then one of the Jamaican man them get a jacket for the Belize man baby. And so on and so forth. Anyway, back to this. This will be a Jamaican-led joint exercise with CARICOM partners and supported by the government of Canada via the Canadian Armed Forces. The Jamaica Defense Force, JDF, said in a release, adding that the exercise is expected to further enhance the preparation of designated CARICOM nation security forces for possible multinational security operations within the Caribbean region. During the exercise, service personnel from the JDF Jamaica Constabulary Force, Royal Bahamas Defense, and Belize Defense Force integrate into a CARICOM joint force, construct to train, plan, and conduct a wide range of scenario-driven security-based activities. The cohort includes over 60 service personnel from the Bahamas who arrived on the island March 29th, while the contingent from Belize arrived in Jamaica on March 30th. They didn't say how many came from Belize. JD have said that the integrated activity in the is a culmination of eight months of parallel training and coordination activities that have taken place across the region with the significant support of the government of Canada and the United States of America. Hmm. So you have U.S. personnel and Canadian military personnel who are putting them together, so to speak. I saw some of the comments, a different article which was worded quite differently than this that said they are, the training mission is in Jamaica and then they will deploy from Jamaica into Haiti. And then, uh, but they are being trained and getting up to par by Canadian military forces. So somebody first question was, oh, so Canada military forces have to come get we up to par, uh, we're not good enough. JD, JD of Jamaica Defense Force is not good enough, or whatever the case may be. Anyways, this is the, this is this. The goal is that they are going to be heading into Haiti pretty soon. Now, barbecue, which is known as the most prominent gang leader, so to speak, is he has he has already made his bones known through big media houses you know I, i'm starting to think this thing is a joke because these big media houses can find these guys to do interviews with them follow them with cameras and then publish it all across the world and then say he's wanted how is he wanted you are just with him you, you know which part of this so how is he wanted but anyhow barbecue said He's willing to talk ceasefire. But he wants Haitians to be at the head of any talk about who will control Haiti from here on forward. No foreign people is going to come in here and say their say and have their way. It's a different age, different time, different day. 
So barbecue depends on some revolutionary stuff like I'm going to die for this. Right? Right. And we don't want no outsider coming in here running this. His latest message is foreigners, we know they're coming. Of course, they're all over the media. And the world is small nowadays. Right? So we know they're coming. We know they're staging in Jamaica. We know they're prepping. We know they're getting help from Bahamas and from Belize and whatever. We know they're coming. But please remember this, that foreign forces will be treated as invaders. And he said that with a pretty high power weapon with two long clip on it. And I can tell he's ready because the clip them... I'll, this is a tactical move. It's done so that you can release and reload in a quickness just by flipping the clip. So y'all know how them do the clip, turn the clip upside down and tape them together. Right. So the man ready. Uh, or he's showing that he's ready anyways. Please remember that foreign forces will be treated as invaders. With that said, Jamaica is sending troops into Haiti. If foreign forces will be treated as invaders, what shall we expect? No longer is the talk, do you think that it's okay for Jamaican forces to be going into Haiti? Uh, that's, be that's beside us now. They are going. Our prime minister already said they are ready. They are going. He's sending them. They are going, right? Wayne Corps says they are ready. And I see a video last night with a bunch of new tactical vehicles. Yeah. The Prime Minister already said they're ready. So they're going. There's no longer asking the public's opinion. That decision has, has been made. They're heading into Haiti. What do you think the outcome of this is going to be? Do you think this is a wise move? And what do you think the outcome of this is going to be? Hmm. So then I make it clear. So them no want no help. Well, Audrey Wright, they're making it clear that they don't want any invaders. Not that they don't want any help. They don't want any invaders. See, here's, I'm, I have to be politically correct in certain aspects. See, let's take a phone call real quick. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. SoFlo. Yeah, family. What go on? Yeah, man, you know what I'm to your phone. Your phone look clear, brother. Well, I'm having fast speed. All right, so better. Yeah, we're better. One more, I know. Two things. Mm -hmm. First thing, we need the people to stop talking about gang they run 80. Mm -hmm. Because that man was named Barbecue. Mm -hmm. The man, a, a military man. See him. So then if you start making it look like a some man friend on a garden, and some man friend on a flanker, and some man from a Clarendon, they do the they go on with the thing then. Like it's just a bag of loose man. Yeah. Like it's, ba it's a bag of loose man. The man them plan and coordinate it. All right, sir. See him? That, 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 that many of them do. See him? And another thing, one more I know, but my business about Belize and Bahamas. Mm. One more I know, if bro God have anything in place because they hear a barbecue say, mm -hmm. any foreigner go treated like it's an invasion. So you know, say, Ed I got bust and Jelly I got bust. Yep. So one more I know. Is when you're not gonna send my brothers and sisters go over the so and them get injured. What do we have put in place to care for these people when they come back and traumatize? Because the American soldiers never really got face no war, you know. Hmm. Yeah, talk, and talk. war come with casualties and, and, and certain kind of atrocities. Yeah, talk See? the talk. Yeah, talk the talk. So so, so more I know when the people them go over there and they get damaged and all is said and done, mm -hmm. what is going to happen to those people that were there and need medical help, <laughs> mentally, physically, and all kind of the all of them? Mm -hmm. Do we have anything in place for them? 
that I want to know. You know, I'm not inside violence still now, you, but I say, Jamaica fear run like it, because you see that boy that one name Andrew Youth sometime, and you know, I grieve me, you know. <laughs> God know, you know. <laughs> when I live at Jamaica sometimes, the man grieve me out. Mm. Believe me. Because them thing is, I a fuck, excuse my language. Talk it talk. Because I, 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 I have no problem with us helping, you know. Mm -hmm. But you are go, you are send we got war. A war you are send we go. Straight up. No, no, two story to it. A war. So, who, when the people them go war and come back and want care, what are you going to do for them? That we want to know. That them if you tell the people. Like you say, it's no longer if they're going, they're going. Yeah. So yeah. what do you have put in place for when them go and come back? All right. You see me more ask them that. Me bless up yourself, man. Manners are respect. Manners are respect. All right. Manners, my brother. Yeah. He, he's asking what all of us, he's asking what all of us is asking, right? But now I try to throw no monkey wrench and other people them thing. I'm not trying to don't play anything. Let me tell you. I'm a Caesar. You see this? You see this thing right here behind me? You see this blue something right there, Sabakami? This right. This this is my that's my dog tags. And that's the exact dog tags that I wore in combat. That's why I keep those dog tags with the silencer on it. Right, that's all. The blue thing right there, so that's a CIB, a combat infantry badge. If we can't tell you about war, I could tell you about upfront war. I wasn't flipping no spatula in no kitchen. I'm an 11 Bravo infantry soldier, okay? I can tell you about war and the front lines of war. Wasn't hiding in no vehicle. Wasn't hiding in no building. Was in it, on foot. Move, shoot, communicate. Did it. So, to me, man, I have questions. I have questions because, just like the brother just said, right? Now, from what I see, they're trying to shape this up to be some kind of assistance and peace mission. And uh, this ain't no peace mission. There are people on the other side who are telling you they are heavily armed. If most of the gun them were in a Jamaica come through, here to reach Jamaica. And here they have so many guns and ammunition that they can actually do food for guns deal with Jamaica. Where man, uh, Parada Larceny in Jamaica, if you don't know it, is heavily tied to arms dealership in Haiti. So man with teeth a cow, slaughter the cow, and carry the whole dead cow meat, go get people in Haiti so them have beef for nyam. And in return, they will get two AK-47 and some bullet for that. If them man they is so heavily armed over there, and they are telling you that when you get here, in his exact words, he said, foreign forces will be treated as invaders. There's no way you're going into a peacekeeping mission. You're going to war. We're going to war with Haiti. Now, let's be honest. Let's be honest. As heavily armed as Haiti is, if Jamaica has the U.S. backing it, Canadian forces and others are there, yes. But Jamaica has the U.S. backing it. I really don't think that barbecue them stand a chance, really. It's going to end up being a slaughter. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? Because I've seen how we do war. And I'm not talking from no civilian perspective. I'm talking from seeing how we do war. Up front, we tear shit up, right? We tear shit up from a distance, and there are casualties of war. Children, women, the objective has to be met, so to speak. Um, but the, the, the important question, though, is what, what will happen for the Jamaican soldiers? Because if they send them in there, they're not going to just have you just sitting in some safe space while they do all the work and then you go in later. If they send you in there and you meet in fire with fire, Casualties are going to happen. Are we preparing our people for what the possibilities are? The woman, them who are sending their husband off, kissing him, the children, kissing daddy. Bye, daddy. Um, see you when you come back. And daddy is smiling and leaving, you know. And then them give you that big speech about it's time to put the women and children to bed. And time for the men to ride out. Let's go. And we say a prayer and we roll into combat. Okay. When body bags start coming back, 
when casualties start coming back, when amputations start coming back, people losing legs, people losing arms, people losing eyesight, so on and so forth, people losing their minds. You know, when this starts happening, how are we going to be dealing with that? Or is this a case of we'll cross that bridge when we get to it? I've said this before, I'll say it again. The United States of America is way more established. I tell people this all the time. If you see a veteran that's out on the streets, because a lot of civilians don't know this, they see veterans out on the streets and they say stuff like, that's how they use you. And then when they're done, they just throw their veterans out into the streets. That's a lie. That's a big lie. No other country in the world has more resources for their veterans than the United States of America does. This is factual, right? So when you see vets out in the streets, a lot of those vets that are out in the streets, they want to be out in the streets. I've done missions where we went out in the streets to get them, went out in the streets to talk to them, went out in the streets to tell them about all the benefits that are available for them and how they can access it. Went with my program coordinator on a bus and in his truck and got them out the woods and out the homeless camps and load them up. We open up the park and cordon off the park and they come in and they come with their, if they don't have their DD-214 or any paperwork, we link them somehow into the system, social security, whatever, find them in the system, put them in the system, hook them up to their benefits, have buses come through on a weekly basis that will take them to their help points. You have mental health um, benefits, you have physical, dental, all this, all, whatever whatever you could think of is available for them. You have halfway housing. They don't have to be out in the streets. These halfway housings have rules. You can't be shooting heroin and you can't be snorting cocaine and you can't be smoking a crack pipe and be in there. They're designed for you to do what you did while you were in the military. Basically, soldier up, right? Take control of your life kind of thing so you're they're forced to actually get to a place where they're like damn i messed up i'm out here looking dirty i gotta get clean okay start going to the meetings start admitting that you're on drugs start getting some help for your addiction start weaning yourself off so on so forth a lot of them don't want to do that because they're far gone on street life living out in the streets nobody to answer to uh the drugs has them. They're hooked on the drugs, whatever strong drug it is, et cetera, et cetera. But Jamaica has none of this type of stuff. So uh, Dorothy T says, I'm buffering. Please let me know when it's buffering so bad that you can't catch what I'm saying so I could stop. Am I good to go? Can you hear me? Good to go? Give me like five good to go. Five yes. So I'll continue. Are we buffering or you can hear me? Are we buffering? Buffering? All right. Uh, don't know what we are going to do about that still. Let me read some of these comments in the meantime. In the meantime, uh, exit and come back in the live. Somebody says if you're buffering to exit and come back into the live. Not everybody is experiencing the buffering. We have our own domestic terrorists that need the JDF, so why the hell commit to Haiti when our country is heading in that direction, in the direction of Haiti? This is Caribou. Caribou is making a very valid point. We have our own domestic terrorists. She's talking about the gangs in Jamaica. And if you don't know it, I believe the, I believe the statistic says 90% of our murders in Jamaica is somehow gang-related. That's a high percentage. So if you get 1,560 murders for the year, 90% of that is gang-related. Makes these gangs our local terrorists, right? Right. And she's saying we have our own domestic terrorists and we need the JDF. So why the hell commit to Haiti when our country is actually heading in that direction? I highly disagree with this as our country needs our soldiers. Well, 
you know what? Somebody isn't planning stuff right. Somebody isn't planning stuff right because our soldiers aren't fighting our gangs in Jamaica. Every now and then, them have an operation, a big operation where them look for a kingfish or no pun intended or somebody big or a head figure or some kind of big bus, but that's about it. It's not like a consistent pressure on them, lock down the place kind of thing. So the gangs roam freely and they conduct business as usual. You know, uh, Jamaica has that about it. Two Irish says that's a suicide mission. And will there be any compensation put in place for the families of dead soldiers returning to Jamaica? Hmm. The next person said, boy, things are going to get sticky in a Haiti because them Haitians don't play. Donna Davis says, yes, my brother, what kind of implementing are they, are they putting in place for those when they come back sick? All right. So that is a major part of everybody's concern, right? Is that what's going to happen when they come back and they start coming back in pieces, figuratively speaking? Uh, Giovanni Roy says, soldiers are soldiers anywhere you go. Put the training into practice. The only disadvantage is knowing the ground and being outmanned. But this move is not practical since a lot of training didn't get put into place. But Jamaican soldiers, that's all they do, though, is train. From a soldier's perspective, I'll tell you this. You might have, I don't know if it's the same thing, I can't speak for, but you might have soldiers there who are ready to go, who are ready to go. Let me tell you something about, it. okay, let me bring civilian mind into the mind of a soldier. It's like this. You're training forever, right? Every day you wake up and you train, and you train for box, and you train to box. And you're boxing. And you're training to box. And you're training to box. And you're never rotted box yet. And you're seeing everybody else boxing. And you're like, I know I'm better than him. And you're training to box. Eventually, you start being like, put me in a game, coach. Put me in. I want to go see what my boxing is about. I want to test my limits. I want to see if I could really box. When we get orders to go off into combat, I can't tell you how excited the only thing my guys are usually sad about is those who are married, who are leaving wives and children behind. That's about it. Ain't nobody sad about nothing else. We sit and make jokes with each other like, yo, if I get hit up, just throw me a morphine pack and tell my family I did my best and blah, blah, blah. We make all kind of jokes. If my dick get blown off, shoot me. I don't want to come back without that. Like, all kinds of stuff. We make silly jokes that are morbid. You know what I mean? But we're ready to go off into it, a lot of them. So, soldiers are going to soldier. And Jamaican soldiers, they've been training for the longest. So, I guess it's time to go test their training and see what it is they're made of. Now, I'll tell you another thing. Somebody just said the only disadvantage is not knowing the terrain. They've mapped that out already, fam. They've mapped out that terrain already. We live in a different time, right? Drones done flew over that and map out that the terrain they are ready. So they have sand table now when they're ready, when they go in. They'll lay out the sand table and they'll know uh, what each place look like before they even go in, right? Boots on ground is kind of different, but they'll have, a, they'll have an idea of the type of terrain that they're working with. So that ain't really going to be no big disadvantage, really. The big disadvantage to them from a tactical point of view is if they go into areas, because this is not going to be war on no big battlefield. You're on that side in blue. I'm on this side in green. And we're shooting at each other until we meet in the middle. This is going, this is going to be urban combat. Urban combat is rough because you don't know where it's coming from. And that's what frigged us up over there. We didn't know where it was coming from. You driving down the street and a sidewalk blow up, right? You driving down the street and a garbage can blow up. You driving down the street and you get hit from anywhere, from any one of these buildings, any one of these windows, 
you don't know. So urban combat is kind of different, and they're going into an urban combat kind of setting, which men don't know how ready they are for all that, but we train heavily on that. And, you know, the, the rest of it is just a mindset thing. For instance, when we were getting ready to go into a desert, we would train in snow. And no, it, it made it didn't make sense to young the younger soldiers coming in. Like, if we're getting ready to go into extreme heat, why are they training us, us in extreme cold? Because it's still a mindset, right? It's still a mindset. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning, SoFlo. Good morning, family. How you doing? I'm doing good. You sound a lot better. Yeah, feeling a lot better too. Listen. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what would happen if the Jamaican soldier just refused to go to Haiti? You can't do that. <laughs> it's time for soldiers to soldier. Soldiers can't refuse orders. Can't they see this is a calling? No, you're you're a soldier. You are <laughs> This is just a population reduction on both sides. You think so? Yeah. Mm. This is definitely a suicide run all the way around. Yeah. And you get rid of some Haitians, you get rid of some Jamaicans, and these are all various class. And it's like a calling, and nobody could see this? Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious. If the men decide not to go, yeah. they're fighting the brothers. They can't. They can't. It's, you know, they choose not to. Yeah. All right. Get through. All right. My best you will. All right, family. I'll, I'll, I'll expound upon that a bit. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So, first of all, all right, big up to every soldier. You know when I come in and say shout out to law enforcement personnel, medical field personnel, military personnel, shout out to every soldier. We can't just get up and say no. It's the one job in the world that you volunteer to go in because we don't have no draft going on, no mandatory military and anything going on. There's nothing written that says you hit 18, you must serve. We voluntarily go in. It's the only job I know that you voluntarily go in and you can't voluntarily get your ass out of it, right? You go work at Burger King, you don't like the conditions, man. Frig this. Take off. Hey, hold your. Take this. I'm out of here, right? Clock out. Go home. Anywhere else, not military. You a soldier in them orders. <laughs> you a you a soldier in the. Listen, man. I see people. Man, well, fuck this. I'm going home. You know what they do? This is your this is your team leader. Oh, you got sand in your clit. Oh, his little pussy hurting. Oh, probably Mackenzie wants to go home. Oh, <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. That's the part your family don't see. You ain't going nowhere. Okay. Um, <laughs> we unfortunately we can't just say no. We we are. Uh, you you made you you committed to that. They're going to hold you to that. You don't get to enjoy, oh, I'm a man in uniform. Yeah, girls love that. Uh, all the benefits that come with it, healthcare benefits and stuff, your family benefits from it. Oh, you love that. A steady paycheck and a nice, secured environment to live in. Oh, you benefit from all that. Oh, comes time to go to war. Uh, I can't go. Hell no. Nah. That's like somebody working, working, working. And then when you say to them, I'm gonna need you to stay an extra hour or two. You know, you be. They're like, nah, I'll, I, I, I won't. And don't ever ask me to stay an hour or two extra because I will never. You know, you, you can't just reap all the benefits of the company, but when it's time to man up, you're ready to run. That's how they look at it. So you're gonna have to like tighten your little fingsters and <laughs> pray to whatever God you pray to and get on out there and get it done. This was my prayer, man. One of my prayers was, God, please don't let anything happen to me out there. And this this Haitian man frigged my head up. No, it's an African man. Frigged my head up. I told you all the story before. Some of you never heard it. I came to, so I was going, there's one deployment that was coming up. It was about to be a very serious deployment. I ended up getting stop loss stuck on this deployment. And my deployment turned from 12 to 16 months in a combat zone. So. 
before I left, I left from Germany to the U.S., came, saw all my family, because I know what's going on, and I might not come back. On my way back to the airport, jumping a cab, African cab driver said, I have my duffel bag with me. The African uh, said, you, 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 you in the military? I said, yes. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm an infantryman. He said, oh, you kill people. I said, no. He said, yeah, that's what the infantry does. I said, okay. He said, uh, you believe in God? I said, yes. He said, well, remember that the same God that you pray to to protect you, the other people that you're going to fight, they pray to the same God to protect them too. So may the best man win. That messed my head up the whole deployment. So I started praying. I said, God, please don't let nobody harm me. Please don't let me have to harm anybody. Please don't. I mean, just power. You get so power to the point where you forget. After you're there, you're like, ah, oh, forget. It, it is what it is at this point. So if my dead, my dead. And uh, if I make it back, I'll make it back. You know? <clears throat> but you can't say no. At the end of the day, we cannot say no. So shout out to every soldier, man. When it comes time to ride that mission, you just got to ride out. You just got to say your prayers, ride out. And that's how that goes. I don't think, I don't think that Haiti, <clears throat> let me see how I should put this. I don't think that Haiti has what it takes to go to war with American sources. Notice I said American sources. All I'm seeing is a CARICOM-based effort, Belize, Bahamas, Jamaica. I'm not seeing America in it. So, I can't speak for them. I don't know how trained they are. I've never heard of them <clears throat> being in combat constantly. <clears throat> As you know, U.S. military were seasoned at war. We've literally been at war now for the past, is it 20 years yet? I think we've been at war for the past 20. Listen, our war started from Iraq, with under the Bush administration, with weapons of mass destruction, right? 30 years now? God damn. See that? And it's never been, and we never stopped. So everybody that goes in, get a piece of it. Everybody that goes in, get a piece of it. That's why you see some people going in and coming right the hell back out. This is why they're now having a problem here in the U.S., meeting their numbers. Because they done ran out of people that are patriotic and ran out of people who are like, I see the end goal. People are now starting to say, nah, this has been going on for way too long. And I, I I don't see the benefits of why, you know, why Jojo died. Why young Kevin gave up his life for this. Why Corporal Smith, who was only 22 years old, gave up his life for that. And his young wife is stuck with his child to raise. I don't see why this, that. So people are starting to look at it different now. But we are seasoned at war. We're seasoned at all types of combat. But I don't I can't say the same for Belize, Bahamas, and Jamaica. I don't know them to be in any constant conflict and well trained as far as war goes. So we don't know what the hell is gonna happen down in Haiti. But all I know is Barbecue said all foreign forces will be treated as invaders. And them have a bugger man behind him, and the bugger man them that's behind him are not just no frivolous man from around Deso and man from over Deso. They are also military personnel. A lot of them are used to be soldiers, and a lot of them used to be police officers. And when the country went upside down, they went off to do what they're doing now. So they're trained too. So they will be using military tactics too. Never underestimate who it is that you're going up against. I'll say that because you just never know, right? But if the U.S. should take full charge of this, Haiti don't stand a chance. Or whoever is in Haiti that's the warring faction, 
they don't stand a chance. They'll be easily wiped out. Easily. Remember I tell you, easily. Um, any amount of soldier Andrew Holiness sent to Haiti, Jamaica will have that lesser amount of soldier, but no problem will be our own soldier. Andrew must send every one of them. We don't need them. <laughs> Andrew must send all of the soldier them because we don't need them. Wow. Allison says 41 years because in 79 they went to Grenada under Reagan. Yeah, but we had a break. I'm talking about consistently. Consistently going into combat. Ever since the Bush administration, we have consistently been going into combat. Rotating out. Next unit, come relieve. Next unit. Next unit, come relieve. Next unit. Steady boots on the ground. Steady fighting. Tanisha Ellis says, who said that? We need our soldiers. You don't know. Use off your nose until you, you, you lose it. Soldiers are soldiers for me, man. And I, I, I'll, I'll give it to you like this. Before we switch topic to the other topic. I'll give it to you like this. If I was to die in combat, I wouldn't want nobody to cry for me. My mama would cry because I'm her son and she'll miss me. But I wouldn't even want her to cry too much because I went out doing what I chose to do, knowing fully what came with what I chose. Just like when I sit here and I say to you guys, I don't mix up in gunman business, gangsterism, street life, because they function from a whole different code book. And they go into it knowing prison, early death, all that stuff. So when it happens to them, I don't shed no tears because I know that a lot of the times these are grown men who chose their path. Yeah. Somebody can't choose them part and then you're crying. Oh God, why, why? They know what they know what comes with it. When you sign up to be a soldier, you know exactly what the hell comes with it. You know exactly what you're about to do. Just like when you sign up to join a gang, you know exactly what the hell comes with it. Just like when you sign up for Garab's a bank, you know exactly what come with that. If you get away, you get a lot of money. If you don't get away, you go to federal prison. You might get killed while trying to do it. All kind, you, you know your choices, right? But I don't know. The most I can say is I pray protection over them and let soldiers do what soldiers do. The grand scheme of things, though, is you're not in control. You're not in control. I remember feeling so used because the first time I went into combat, it was under a, a, a president. It was under a president that I did not vote for and I did not like. But I still had to soldier up and go. And those orders came from that man's desk all the way down the line to my unit. So here's somebody telling me what to do, even though I didn't vote for them, would have never voted for them. I voted against them and I didn't like them, but I still had to ride out when he said, ride out. That's what comes with being a soldier, right? You follow orders and you march out and that's it. That's it. So with that said, man, you know, I know some of them might be nervous. It's only human to be nervous. I know some of them might probably not even be up to spar, up to par trained. Get your stuff together, tighten up, and 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 keep it tight all the way. Go in with with the mindset that you're coming back home, and that's it. And then this too shall pass. You know, it's not like it's gonna be forever. Tanisha Ellis says we don't want Afghanistan on repeat for Jamaica. That's what I'm saying. I don't think this is going to be something that will last 20 years of us being in Haiti constantly and all that other stuff. So for, for my Jamaican brothers and sisters, I would say, you know, or the brothers that are going in, tighten up. Go in with the mindset that you're coming home and do what you got to do to make it home. And that's it. That's all you can say for them. Can't say nothing else. You know, 
Winsome says, I'm sorry for the Jamaican soldiers. Don't be sorry for them. They're not sorry for themselves. They, don't look at them as no pitiful nothing, you know. They're trained way above anything that you probably could think of. They're built for this. They're built for this. Don't, don't, don't look at them as... It's like some people look at Jamaica and they're like, oh, Jamaica is so poor. And, you know, like we're some rubbish country at the bottom of the heap and we barely could scrape up and make it up when that's not true. And then you land in Jamaica and you're like, damn, I saw people that live better than me. I me live a foreign and a first world country. Me living a, how come me still careful for house like that from when me I work? You know, how come me not have all them things that with them people have? Don't, don't, don't look at it like that. Don't, don't start crying for them. They built for this. They built for this. Shout out to the JDF. They built for this. I told y'all my dad, right? My dad was an intelligence officer with the JDF. Uh, so I come from that cloth anyways. Um, they built for this, man. Yeah. Sorry for the Belizean one them. Don't sorry for none of them. They're soldiers. They're soldiers. They'll be all right. They'll be all right. And whatever comes with it, they know what was coming with it. Right? Um... Jeff says, watch out when the Caribbean start fight each other. Dutty girl, Miss USA and a big friend them are going to use it to their advantage. There's a bigger picture. Jamaica is always happy to tap dance for the USA, the UK. Ah, the bigger picture, huh? Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Hey, Flo. How are you? I'm good, family. How are you doing this morning? I'm all right. Talk to us now. <laughs> I said, I'm going to call you and pull off an All Fools Day prank. But I said, maybe your heart no good, you know? <laughs> yeah, nobody do it. <laughs> <laughs> nobody do it. You don't prank your kids them at All Fools Day or something? Yeah, I might do it today. Because <laughs> now that you remind me, I might do it today. <laughs> so my question, Flo, is um, no, many times when we used to be at Jamaica, Mm. If if your old sketch on fire, if I in fireman them I play football, so or them I play that we know they have to stop what then they do and then by the time they come I was bundled. They all bundled. <laughs> Mrs. shot a fire in high square and the police station the police station is like oh, a quarter mile and they now come out until they shut, shut down, down fire. Yeah, a they, real thing. Yeah, they still have played them in New York, them things. Eh. So, so me wonder if I ask, why soldier them are you have to? <laughs> me I laugh because, me I laugh because, a real thing. I remember, remember I shot a beat and the police never played them in New York. I said, oh, me not, when that done, and when it done, them answer. Uh, you can't blame them all the time. The one say house a bundog. <laughs> when it's time they respond, house bundog flat. <laughs> yeah, man. <gasps> so me wonder why so much of them I have those four flow since mm. you're in that field. Train. The soldiers in Jamaica train. They also work jointly with the JCF. I, I, I see every single time they are Jamaica, I see them out and about, you know, uh, with the JCF, I, especially in the rural areas. I normally see them roaming about heavily. But but that doesn't account for the whole soldier force then, the whole JCF. A few of them may see out and about. But if they're like that all across the island, then I would say they're working. They're working at home, helping to keep peace, helping to, uh, you know, you know them checkpoints there where them have, and then when stuff like zones of special operations, ZOSO and SOE, state of emergency, they'll jump in there, Soto, and do what they have to do. But that's about the full extent that I've seen them. I never see them deploy anywhere, go into combat and come back home. So I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, before I go, when they're on the street working with the police officers, mm -hmm. do you think the police officers... Squeeze them something to like what off, off the record, you know, when police stop you and you say left or right, mm -hmm. I, I don't yeah. want to look at breakfast money. Mm -hmm. You know, feel say they squeeze the police them something, the soldier them something, probably, you know, probably 
me, me not going to say they do. I don't know. So I won't speak on that. I don't know no. I, something about me where I track them. Well, I'm in Jamaica, but I always run into them. So I you know what I say. I don't know what I say. I saw it go. Uh, and no, I man, don't have no proof. Today, remember, I said, today are April's full. You can't just say, say what you April... have to say. No, sir. Not... <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. We never run into that yet, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, then. Big up yourself. All right, brother. <laughs> All right, sir. Hey, big up to every JCF and JDF officer out there, um, personnel out there. Uh, but as things be... And the little mad mad one them that's not really doing them not have nothing good for it. it we still couldn't do it without them. You know, Master, because at the end of the day, that's who we have. We have to work with what we have, not true. Yeah, so we can't just throw out the baby with the bath water. We have to work with what we have. And in the meantime, I hope them get to the point where we weed out the ones who are not supposed to be there and then carry on building the force. <coughs> Yo. Me not know about nothing. And the Jamaican soldiers have been in Grenada. Uh, don't they take soldiers different? Them, hold on. Uh, King David says, I doubt they take it soldiers different. Many female soldiers in Jamaica. There are many female soldiers in Jamaica, yes, but I don't think there are female soldiers in Jamaica's infantry. There are different factions in the military, you know. So when, when it's time to fight, you'll see mostly men. You won't see women. There, I don't think we have women in our infantry. So I demand them not to get sent away now. So people, Ross Clark, no. The, the fun side, the funny side to this, not fun. Missing man go upon SOE, State of Emergency, Zone of Special Operation, just within the island. Come from Kingston. Get stationed way down a mobile. And by the time soldier gone a mobile, wifey have man a jump back fence and run out a back door already. So you can imagine now when she knows say, I hate you gone. <laughs> oh God. Listen, uh, you have to have a good wife in a man. You have to have a sanctified, Holy Ghost filled wife. To live them kind of life, your guy. Why if you not want a good woman? I look at something start HR like you're gone two weeks already. And the big chisel up boy next door ups. Um, Cause him know say your husband gone to him, know him, and talk to him every day. Um, two months gone. Um, him know say you, you're in need now. At uh, two months now, you're over there. We can't hear it from next door. She's at it again. I get her some help. Um, every day I walk, walk, walk. If she not strong, you see, him end up over there. But I go kill some of them. And that families are going to be destroyed in the process. But without cheese for life, we had say, <laughs> Boy, Holy Ghost fill water, baptize, baptize, and only Jesus on our mind. Hallelujah. Audrey right. <laughs> If you don't have one of them there, <laughs> boy, if you don't have one of them there, see, then God go with you, my friend. Anyhow, let's move right along, right? Um, There's a story here. This is from another Friday when she said, um, early in Tucker. So, Flo, you have to cover that story there. Well, we go, we go look up the story and it's a Jamaican woman. Um, This woman is charged with murder and her mother. Switching topics, murdering her mother, carved out her mother's heart with a knife, the police said. If you look at the icon for this video this morning, the lady you see in the front of everybody with the dreadlocks, that's her. Uh, as the story goes, first of all, trigger warning because this story includes graphic details, gruesome details of a murder. If you don't want to hear anything like this, exit stage left. Now, I'm going to tell the story and we're not telling it from a place of where we're glorifying anything or glamorizing anything or making anything of it other than my end goal is to always enlighten and always have you ready. Remember, I know I mean, say, be careful who you file for and bring comfort, uh, foreign. 
Be careful who file for you and bring your go foreign. Be careful who you make stay in your house. I've said it. I would never let anybody stay in my house because I have a hard time sleeping already anyways. My wife would tell you, if me and she argue, we go sleep in our next room, in the house, on the next side of the house. I me lock the door too. I me keep gun next to me too. I all them something there. If she cook me, don't eat it. Me funny like that. I call me paro because I've seen too many times. Not saying she'll do me nothing, but I don't want to find out, right? I've seen, I've seen too many times where people take in their own child because the child I go through some things. The child end up kill the mother and kill the whole family and them something there. I want to keep you all aware of these things, that these things happen, right? And here's another story. Junior McPherson says, so flow, the man crossed the fence, live, on, live in our belly. Boy. So I go here, man. Uh, Tallahassee police made a grisly discovery after responding. Let me put on a glass of cars. These lights are now starting to blind my eyes. So Tallahassee police made a grisly discovery after responding to a report that a woman of a woman who is known to have mental health issues as she was dancing outside naked of her house. Reggae music was playing from the inside of the house. Yeah, I mean, I know which artist she did that play, but she put on her some good reggae music and she was outside dancing, but booky ass naked in a foreign area. Her mother's heart was carved out of her mother's chest. Her name is Earlene Tucker. She's 58 years old and she was arrested and is allegedly the murder, and she is the alleged murder of her mother, Lucille Tucker who was living with her at her daughter's townhouse in Hartsfield Way. Officers responded to the townhouse after getting a call from a delivery driver who said that the woman had tried to get inside of her car because she came to deliver some stuff and the woman ran out naked and tried to get into her car. And the, the other, the woman's daughter who said that she was outside naked and refusing to go inside to put on some clothes. My mom's outside naked. She's refusing to go inside the house to put clothes on. She killed my, my grandmother, which is her mother. Early in Tucker was rambling, saying stuff that made no sense, incoherent speech, outside the townhouse. And initially, she put up a whole lot of resistance when they were trying to get her to go inside. According to recently released court documents, she insisted that the police take her into custody. They said, go in the house. We got to put some clothes on you. She said, arrest me. Go in the house. Arrest me. I have to go to the police station. You need to take me. Take me now to the police station, Tucker said to the police officers. I have committed a grievous crime. Take me now to the police station. She eventually agreed to go back inside of her home and to put on a robe. And she led the officers through the front door of the house where there were obvious signs of horror that had unfolded inside of that townhouse. Once inside the residence, Earlene stood over an apparent human organ, which was on the ground approximately six to eight feet in the residence past the front door going in. The probable cause affidavit says that Earlene began breathing heavily and grunting at the officers after they asked her, what was that? What's that? That piece of thing right there. One officer stayed with her as another one went to find some clothes for her to put on. After knocking on the closed bedroom door and asking, is anyone inside? The officer found Earlene's mother, Lucille Tucker's body, in a blood-soaked bed with multiple stab wounds all about her, to the middle of her chest mainly. Police said that her injuries were consistent with an heart surgery operation and that the organ found on the living room floor was confirmed to be the majority of her heart. 
In an interview room at Tallahassee Police Department headquarters, she talked to herself constantly, nonstop, for hours. And she made several admissions to killing her mother. Yeah, I killed her. I killed that bitch. I killed her. I killed her. She said that her mom was a sacrificial lamb and that she was going to die right there with her mother. I murdered my mom in that house. Yeah, I killed her. I murdered her. I murdered her in that house, Earlene said to the detectives. Later, after the police had ended their attempts to interview her, she made a statement referencing cutting out her mother's heart to inspect it. Why did you cut her heart out? They asked. I wanted to inspect it. You wanted to inspect it? Inspect it for what? According to court records, police found traces of blood in the bathroom sink, in the hallway leading to her mother's bedroom, and on a knife that was found on a nearby dresser. Family members told the police that Early Tucker is a former CNA, a certified nurse's assistant, and she was caring for her mom, who was in poor health and had just moved in a year earlier. She also said that Earlene Tucker had a known history of mental health problems. Her family said that she had been hospitalized approximately 30 to 40 years ago for mental health issues in Palm Beach County, Florida, and again in 2009. Earlene Tucker's daughter said that she was not aware of any medical diagnosis, although she did suspect that her mom was schizophrenic. Earlene Tucker, who has been held without bond at the Leon County Detention Facility, entered a conditional not guilty plea on March 8th. The court also ordered a psychological evaluation to determine whether she is competent to proceed. Why did you take out her heart? She said she wanted to inspect it. Another article said she wanted to inspect it to see if there was any love left in it. Hmm. That alone, I could read between the lines of that. Yeah? I wanted to inspect it to see if there was any love left in it. Remember, her mom was in poor health. She was her mom's main caretaker, right, according to this. Her mom had moved in with them so she could take care of her. Taking care of a parent or a loved one in their end times through their illness, whatever they have going on, it could get pretty, it could get pretty rough. You know, a lot of caretakers need a break. And I've seen a lot of caretakers break under pressure uh, going through taking care of a loved one. But in her case, they're saying she had mental issues already from the get-go. Now, taking out our heart to inspect it. For what? To see if there's any love left in it. Hmm. Something happened that triggered her. I don't know as what. We can only assume. Maybe she wasn't feeling appreciated. Maybe she has never felt loved by her mom, who now she has to end up taking care of, right? I tell a lot of people this, them little children that you're raising, they won't be little for long. My grandparents always said, my grandfather actually, not my granny this time, my grandfather always said, me I go, uno I come. That stuck with me. They're on their way out this world. We're the young ones that were coming up. Life cycle, eventually, once a man, twice a child, right? A lot of adults treat children like them children will never get big. Like them children will forget what you put them through. Like them children will somehow just forget everything you did to them. 
and it's quite the opposite. They understand from an early age more than you think they do. They internalize a lot more. Enough people hold on to stuff even when they don't think they're holding on to it. And life has a funny way of placing you right back at the feet of the people who you did wrong, never showed love to, always put on the back burner, all this other stuff. And unfortunately, some people carry resentment. Yes? So... Like I always joke and say to you guys, may I do my part with my picnic them because my biggest fear is that one day them will kick with my walking stick if God keep me around that long, push my wheelchair down as flight a step, beat me up in my old age and say stuff like you remember when you remember when you used to do, remember how you used to treat when you used to do that and you used to what are you gonna do? Eh? You can't do nothing but stay there and take lick. So, or stay there and be abused. And abuse doesn't just come in physical form. It comes in verbal abuse as well. Emotional abuse as well. So nobody think, oh, when them lick you, you're going to bruise up on somebody, you're going to see it, and then they're going to take you out the house and whatever. It could be emotional abuse as well. Yeah? You want something to eat or drink, you're thirsty, you're dead from when, you can't get up, go get it for yourself. Then walk past you and kiss teeth. Remember when me used to ask you for things and you used to go on like a big animal. Look by you now, eh? Daddy, look at you. Eh? You thirsty? You want water? Okay. Yeah. Me give you some water when me feel like you thirsty. That's how you used to tell me. Yeah, man. You know, just things happen along the way. I think, I think she never felt loved by her mom. Or whatever the discussion and conversation was that led to that. She said she take out the heart to inspect it, you know. Even in madness, there is sense. Take out the heart to inspect it. Inspect it for what, Earlene? To see if there was any love left in it. I can't help but to think of her flying into that mindset and saying, yo, the woman you know have no love in her. No love in her. So I take out your heart out of your chest and see if any love left in it, even though it's crazy. It's crazy. It's batshit crazy. But there you have it. There you have it. So that's the story that they was asking me to cover. And I had to go look up some stuff on it to make sure, say, you know, at first I had to make sure it even happened. Be careful. Be careful. Another thing among us that we do is we downplay mental health so much the first thing I see in the comments under any of these situations from Jamaican people, as somebody up here, I don't know, all the years I've been on YouTube doing this, I've always told my people, especially Jamaican and Caribbean people, not just Jamaican, Caribbean people, we have in our culture, in our Caribbean culture, it's from any one of the island, them man, somebody up here, somebody Juju, somebody... The, the, we have to start learning about mental health. Mental health issues are very real. The obvious narrative, Jamaica from the outside. Oh, Jamaica from the outside is in the building. Big up yourself, Jamaica from the outside. Jamaica from the outside. Yo, y'all go look at Jamaica from the outside channel. I didn't even see you there. Uh, just go look. You all, And for those of you who are in Florida... Really go look for Jamaica from the outside. Me need to go get some fresh goat meat. Me lose my goat meat yesterday. Seventy odd dollar worth of goat meat me buy, and my wife found it in the garbage yesterday. Cause we are hunt down the whole house. I try to find the goat meat and can't find it. But anyhow, back to this story. Mental health among us, we still take it for a joke, or we still say is obvious. Or we still tell the people them about, you're not praying hard enough, man. Pray harder. And, and it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with any of that. So the sooner we are able to educate ourselves about what mental health issues are, um, how they can be exacerbated, how they can be treated, triggers, stuff to look for, changes, all these other things, then we'll start to become a better set of people and we'll be able to help our own or we'll be able, even able to save ourselves. Yeah. Because you don't know enough. 
you don't know. One of them little picnic in your house or one of them nephew or whoever it is. It only takes one family get together and sleep over and somebody head chip off and decide, say, I'm going to kill the whole family tonight. And we end up here. Front page news. Just like that. Right? So it's important to stop with this. It, or it, uh, obvious, somebody obvious, you know, or somebody put something in like weed, or somebody, the, it, mental health issues are a serious thing in our community that we pay very little attention to. Very little. Cassandra Martin says, my mom used to tell me that she would have, she should have aborted me when she was pregnant with me and told me that my face broad like cow shit on rock stone. And I resent her for years now and don't talk to her. You see? Them kind of something there. Those kind of things. Now, your mom wasn't thinking into the future. She wasn't thinking that you were going to be an adult one day and be able to internalize and play those words back and look at her. And you have to say to yourself sometimes, say, that woman, yeah, that woman, yeah, terrorized me, you know, and kill her dead. If she's a Caribbean mom, kill her dead. She did nothing wrong. Is It was you or I did what I had to do at the time or one list of excuses them have. But she did nothing wrong. Yeah, man. Sydney Reed says, so flow. Not even bother talk about Jamaicans and this other thing. It is sad to know that in 2024, Jamaicans are still back at the class. Don't slack, but. Yeah, man. Everything is attributed to Obia. We see a young lady yesterday, she is in the Star or the Gleela or something. She's 17 years old. I will shine some light on her story at a different date. Um, her ankle started swelling up, right? And then from the ankle start swell, she was graduating high school and getting ready to go into training, to culinary arts training, because that's where her passion is. And then her ankle just started swell, so. And then they went and did a bunch of tests, x-rays, whatever, and they couldn't find what was wrong. And the ankle swelled to the foot swell. Till one whole side are swell. Turns out she has a certain kind of cancer. And, you know, sitting there watching her and her mom plead for help. Because she can't move around. And all these other things are going with her. When I went to the comment section, the first four, five, six comments me read me just left. Because all of them were... As somebody up your are. That was the first one. The second one, that's why I'm telling us to keep your picnic them away from other people because people jealous of your picnic them progress, especially when for them picnic now make no progress. Then we care your picnic them name go up your man. Next one again. And the girl has cancer. Cancer. It can't hit anybody at any age. Right? And it's a rare form of cancer that she has. So we need to start educating ourselves more on these things, man. And I know it's obya. Everything are obya and somebody in, in obya are. You saw her, Marielle Finley? Yeah, she is very intelligent. Very well-spoken, very intelligent young lady. Yeah, me feel bad for her, man. But them things here can't happen to anybody. That's why I get up and tell her every day, man, Safi, stop taking life for granted and live life to the fullest and be appreciative and thankful because you don't know. You don't know. You know? You, you, you in your 19, 20, 21, boom, breast cancer. You in your 19, 20, 22, go sleep, don't wake up. You know, it, it, massive heart attack. Whose son the other day is 24, had a massive stroke. At 24, you're thinking there may have something where granny might get. You know? Life is set up in a way my friend. Education goes a long way. And when we start to educate ourselves, and I say it to you like this, we live in the age of information. We are floating on the information highway. Use the, the phone where you have. is a whole computer you have in your hand. Use it and educate yourself. Let's make it a point of duty according to this story. Well, how it fits with this story in particular. Let's make it a point of duty to each one of us Make it a point to educate ourselves more about mental health issues. Start there. There are different diagnoses, different types of different symptoms, different, you know, onset, different, all kinds of something out there. 
start educating yourself. Yeah, anything up to you, Obia. If you're yeah, Twitch, somebody are Obia. <laughs> when Jamaicans feel sick and they say drink tea, they don't think to see a doctor. Drink tea. Tea heal everything. Yeah, some are afraid of doctor, yeah, man. I mean, I like cause you, them. Some of them doctor here are some mad scientists. Them just want to carve you up and misdiagnose you and try experiment on you and see what is what and what medication work versus what don't work. I always hear, I always remember the Tuskegee experiment every time I'm getting ready to go to the doctor myself. And and it kind of <laughs> have me, I put off my appointment because we don't want nobody doing an experiment for me. But yeah, Christianity is the biggest. Obia talk about that, said Jeff. Jeff, you know, draw me out this morning. I got left now one day. Um, the next one we wanted to talk about this morning is the UK resident gunned down. I don't know how this story goes. I don't want to put fear in anybody. But obviously, this family is targeted. Two other persons were also shot in this attack. A 49-year-old man named Michael Basir. He was gunned down. I was supposed to cover this story from before. But, you know, my voice did gone, so I backtrack. A 49-year-old uh, British resident was visiting Jamaica. His name is Michael Basir. And he was shot and killed. Two other persons were also shot in the attack. Michael, he is actually the brother of Manchester businessman Jerome Basir, who was shot and killed a little over a year prior. So, them shoot and kill him, brother, a little over a year prior. And then he's in Jamaica to visit, and they shot and killed him too. The older one is 67. The younger one, who just got killed, is 49. Quite an age gap between brothers. He was killed on the morning of March 14th of 2023 while working on an apartment complex that he was developing in the Tollgate area in Clarendon. That's the older one. The younger one was recently killed in Jamaica as well. And they were here. He was here at his brother's wake. So it's three brothers that died. The Gleaner understand that Michael recently came to Jamaica from the United Kingdom to attend the funeral of another one of their brother, who sources said had collapsed and died. Him just passed out dead. They were at a wake for the brother on Thursday, and it is reported that about 8.45 p.m., Michael was among several persons at the wake for his brother when who had died in the UK. The brother collapsed and died in the UK. His body was sent to Jamaica for burial. And they were there at the wake, chilling, when they were pounced upon by gunmen who opened fire. And Basir received several gunshots to his head and his upper body. And he was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Mind you, they killed his older brother about a year ago. The head of the Clarendon Police Superintendent Carlos Russell says that so far they have not figured out any motives for this killing. And they are um, imploring others who might have information who could assist with this investigation to give them a call. Last Sunday, a 65-year-old man was also suspected arson attack killed in Tollgate. And up until March of March 16th, there had been 12 people killed so far in Clarendon, Jamaica. But neither here nor there, I found it pretty suspicious that them killed a businessman last year. The brother dropped down at England, then fly him to Jamaica for burial. The other brother fly down to be there, then kill him too. Now three brother gone. Mm. Something salt. Something salt. The last one for the morning. I can't speak on that. As you all know, I am from Clarendon. Can't speak on it. Don't know what I'm there. Don't want to act like I know what I'm there. But something in a something. And it's obvious, right? 
Yes, Jeff. Jeff says, wait a minute. Wasn't it a few months ago that Soflo did a story about a guy who went to bury his mom and was killed? Wow, this kind of story is getting too common. Oh, it happens all the time. That's, it, over the years that I've done these stories, they happen so many times, sometimes I just skip them. Because you know what's the funny thing is? People curse me out for doing the story. But the funny thing is, me not make up the story them. I get the story from our news in Jamaica. I don't do stories unless the stories have already been published. But them cost me, you know? Why you always a chat bad about Jamaica? Everything bad you find for chat about Jamaica, you chat about Jamaica. I'm trying to let people be aware that, especially in that case, right? The mother owned multiple houses, apparently. Or somehow multiple houses were owned and they were under the mother's ownership. The family that was there living in one of the houses next to Fiar House, they said that couple of weeks before her death, she had to run out of the house naked because a fight them a fight her in there and they didn't want to hurt her, stab her up, chop her up, right? And then funny to see she died, and I said she died under suspicious circumstances. Now her son come from England to come bury his mom and end up never making it back to England. His own brother killed him. Because, and and I, I even said, listen, they have all, I think it's like six or seven houses. And I said, they could have turned all those houses into Airbnb businesses because Airbnb business is booming in Jamaica right now. They could have created a whole company. They could have put every unemployed family member to work, be gainfully employed. Who are going to drive the tourists them to the place? Who are going to fix up the place? Who's going to be their chef when they're here? Who are going to drive them go back at the airport? Who's going to be their tour guide? Carry them go some places off the beaten path that the regular places don't carry them go. Who are going to this, that, and the other? Pitching business ideas, right? How we always see right here, so And we don't see the long shot, the bigger picture. And we end up stepping on our own toes and killing off our own kind. When we could actually be building real wealth. Happens all the time. Be careful. The message in that one was, nobody go Jamaica go fight nobody if you know dead left nothing. Then we kill you down there. You hear that? Especially if you live a foreign, not really in Jamaica like that, because that was the dispute between that one brother and his brother. We, the here, I take care of mama all these years. You fly in every now and then. Where you come from, I come talk about house and papers. Okay. See it there? Buried his mom. You had to bury him shortly after. So yeah, left the dead, left something alone. Buffering. I'll give it a second. Give it a second, give it a second. Franklin Claudette says our soldiers should boycott about going to Haiti. Nah, happen. Can't happen. They'll throw your ass in the barracks or and, and lock you in um a brig and put other soldiers to watch you. <laughs> the last one. This come from a subscriber who called in friday remember the lady that called in friday and said she wanted us to talk about this the uk member of parliament diane abbott versus head of the phoenix partnership tpp frank hester contracted to implement jamaica's nids program and his racism okay so the ministry of health and wellness monday Joined with the diaspora in condemning recently reported racist, sexist, and violent remarks about UK Member of Parliament Diane Abbott made by Head of Phoenix Partnership, TPP, Frank Hester. If you look at the icon for this video this morning, the people who you see, the, the lady in the pink, red kind of outfit and the Caucasian man standing in front of her, those are the two individuals we are discussing right now. So, why she want me to talk about this? We'll get into that. In February of 2023, TPP, the company, was contracted
to implement Jamaica's electronic health records. You know, they say NIDS is coming, it's rolling out, it's about to roll out. This contract with the government of Jamaica said a ministry statement was undertaken after TPP's selection as the most suitable firm to do so, following the due process of an international procurement sanction involving IDB. Subsequent to the award of this contract, the MOHW learned of this particular incident. Following consultation with the IDB, IDB is the Inter-American Development Bank. Co-financier of the contract and the Attorney General's chambers, the MOHW continues its monitoring of development in this matter, which is now the subject of a police investigation, the ministry said. The MOHW takes this matter very seriously and calls for appropriate action to be taken within the firm to hold Mr. Hester accountable based on the findings from the investigation. The MOHW condemns any form of discriminatory behavior, including racism and sexism. The MOHW remains committed to promoting a cultural and a culture of respect, quality, equality, and understanding within the MOHW and throughout our business relationship. Hester is alleged to have said, Hester, who is the white man, who is the CEO of the company, who is contracted to roll out Jamaica's NIDS program, he's alleged to have said that Abbott, Abbott, who is Britain's longest-serving black MP, who has Jamaican heritage, Hester said about Abbott, she made him want to hate all black women and that she should be shot. Those were his statements. Those are the inflammatory statements that were that are causing this stir. So now people are saying, why are you trusting NIDS? Such a sensitive thing to an individual who is clearly a racist. And they feel like the contract should be taken away from TPP, which he is the CEO of, and given to somebody else. His statement was that she made him feel like, quote unquote, I want to hate all black women and that she should be shot. Abbott described Hester's comment made in 2019 as frightening and alarming, given the murders of lawmakers Joe Cox and David Ames in recent years. Earlier Monday, Dr. Alfred Dawes, opposition spokesman on health, urged, urging the ministry to provide transparency regarding its contract with TPP for the digitization of electronic health records in Jamaica. Beyond the moral objections to conducting business with an overt racist, there are serious concerns surrounding the procurement process of that contract. The initial request for a proposal invited tenders for a 2.4 million US dollar contract, and yet the contract signed with TPP was valued at 5 million US dollars instead. We are asking for more clarification as to why there was a variation of over 100% at the time when MOHW is facing questions on how the Cornwall Regional Hospital Project has seen cost overruns costing taxpayers 20 billion Jamaican dollars up to 2 billion. Dodd said that there is an urgent need for the ministry to address both the moral and the financial aspects of this issue. The lack of transparency and accountability is unacceptable 
especially considering the scrutiny from both the international community and Jamaican taxpayers. So that is where they are at with that. And basically want to know, see, NIDS is something that is highly sensitive. We're talking about people's biometrics here, right? And a new system ushered in. And then when you get into medical records, then you're talking about more highly sensitive stuff. To put a company who is CEO'd, ran by a known, somebody who makes public statements like these, People in Jamaica are saying it's wrong. Lift that contract from him. Give it to somebody else. There's no way that this guy... Remember, I know Jamaica is majority black people. So if this person is able to speak in this manner, at that level, about somebody who is so prominent, she makes me feel like I want to hate all black women. She should be shot. This is Britain's longest running... Black MP. Hmm. I don't know how to feel about that. Dan Abbott has had so much racism and discrimination. Jamaica should let the, this company go, says Mary Johnson. Donna Thompson says, big up, hacking immigration law firm, helping Jamaicans and others, giving free consultation. Big up, Jim Flo. Big him up. <coughs> Hacking immigration law firm. All right. Deco 2K says, I don't give a F about that cause. First off, them should get no contract from Jamaica government. Why Jamaica don't do it themselves? Bring somebody with the expertise and train people how to do it. Ah. Uh, Context, backstory, why was she suspended before? Tanisha Ennis, tell us why she was suspended before now. Because they're not giving us any context like that. Jeff says, I always remember Buja song, things change now in the sister life hard. I have to keep in touch and know what's happening home will always be home. You know, them feel like when them say anything, he's going to big you up too. Silent Majority says, on a maker of principle, this contract should be rescinded immediately. I agree. I agree. Listen, yesterday, right, <clears throat> there's a funny thing about Jamaicans and Jamaica. <clears throat> They're going to hate me for saying this, but I'm going to say it. Here's a funny thing about Jamaica and Jamaicans. People in white skin are never wrong. Believe me. And Jamaicans will walk around, right, and they'll say, Oh, I can't stand them white people and them do this and do that. But you see, if that white person is in a position of power, you could point out all... You hear what I'm just saying? Him say, she make him feel like she him for hate all black woman. Him say, she need to be shot. I don't give a damn what the context was. That should have never came out of his mouth. Just the other day, we had uh, local elections going on in Jamaica. Two politicians are now in trouble because one of them said... No PMP now get no money. And are we still run round here? And the people said, Oh, really? It's not your money. And for a sitting member of parliament, that is an inflammatory statement, and it actually shows how your constituents, how your um how the cabinet that you are in is run. So that's how y'all do business over there at the JLP. You guys hold the money back from constituencies that you think are PNP constituencies, right? He just exposed y'all. They said he had to go. The other one that said he's talking to the chopper them, the, the scammers. I don't mean, tell nobody what to do. We don't there, I don't want to do. All I'm saying is stop broth out the money, waste out the money. When you get the money, make sure you set up the money properly. Make sure mama gets something out tight, get a house. Make sure you invest in a some, something like that. Everybody said he needs to go too, right? Because in the position that you're in, 
you can't be up there talking about advising choppers on how to properly um, invest scammer money. So why would you now say, uh, I don't really see nothing wrong with what he said. She makes me feel like I should hate all black women. Um, she should be shot. I really don't care what the context is after that. That should have never came out of your mouth, period. Lift that contract. Some people feel like they're in a position where I am so powerful that I can say and do what I please. And the little minions will still run around me. <laughs> and I can say, yes, no, stop. Okay, you come, move. I don't know. I find that distasteful, to say the least. But I'm not one to act like I know everything. So somebody just said, put more context to it and find out why she was suspended. I don't, I, it says nothing about her suspension, but I'll go look it up. Okay. But it's true. Now, Mary Johnson says she was suspended because she made a comment that Jewish travelers and I think Irish people are not as discriminated against as much as black people are. <coughs> okay. So, <clears throat> what, what was about that comment? The contract was for two hundred and fifty million, and it doubled to five hundred million. Who got a pop off? <clears throat> Tanisha Ennis says, "I agree, but context is important. Suspending a contract is not chicken feed." True. And Jeff says, "Amen, Soflo. That is true. I did ten years in tourism, seven in Jamaica. Hey, me I them up me when I get out. Me frightened for white people. Bad, bad. You see? Mm-hmm." Donna Thompson says, was it Dennis Meadows? I know him very well. Yes, Meadows was one of them. Rash Jada says, Garvey, Sam Sharp, Bogle, Nanny, blood diluted. No Jamaican no leave who fight against what is wrong. <laughs> Rash Jada, big up yourself. That part. Because they make the consequences so severe, my friend. Yeah, man. Listen, I'm going to go out this morning, right? I'm going to end this video right now, but I want you to think of this. Even me coming up here and saying to you, I don't think he should have that contract because of what he said. I will have to double back and say, punish him for what he said by removing him with the involvement of the NIT project in Jamaica. But like somebody just said, removing that contract and finding somebody else eligible is not chicken feed. So we have to be logical about it, right? We're on the outside looking in. We don't know the intricate dealings of it. But I'll say this to what Rash Jada just said. She called out some heroes' names and she said their blood is diluted and there ain't too many Jamaicans left who are willing to stand up for what is right. And I'll say this in closing today. The masses are easily bought and sold. It's very easy to turn the masses against an individual. On top of that, the consequences are so severe. You will spend days, weeks, months, years building something, right? And that something can be torn down in minutes just by you deciding to stand up for what you think is right. Now here's the sad part. The people who you represent standing up for what you think is right, they'll scatter like roaches and they'll leave you with your torn down empire that it took you years to build. Understand? So when you see people now don't speak up on certain things, it's because first comes self-sustainability i have to be able to take care of myself i have to be able to take care of my family 
My children depend on me. Six of them may have. Right? So when people jump up and say, I'm standing on business and I'm doing this. If I should do it, standing on business and I'm doing this. And then I watch something that I put so much blood, sweat, and tears into crumble. 90% to 99% of the people who I did it for won't even help me rebuild a new platform. Won't even show up in my time of need. Most of them will go and say, yeah, man, a long time in if you go on, man, because I'm chat too much. And, you know, it's so easy for them to turn on you, you know? So, yeah, I don't too blame people anymore. We have to be wise out here. Because we have something when you're in the internet. And when I think of the internet, I think of, uh, you ever see a spider build a web? You see how the web is? And we're like the little flies, right? And all of we get caught in the net internet and everything in that net is connected so it's easy for them to just clip out a partner and you are no longer associated with our part of or have a leg to stand on clip out a partner you gone to or you got something to say clip you out too you gone to you know so we gotta be very careful out here what we standing on what we speaking about what we're willing to sacrifice for right so don't hold against me when sometimes you hear me not say nothing about some things. Because one thing we know for sure, I saw it recently. I'm not calling no names, but I saw it recently. There was a, a particular person who was fast rising. That particular person and everybody, yeah, man, me like him, man, me go over there. Me don't know me can't stand them sometimes, but me go over there and them this and them that and but me still because the, the, the content is so engaging and it's truth they're talking and they're this and they're that. And I watch that platform go down, you know. And then to this deal, the platform that can't even be half of what it was when it went down. That tells me. All who are talking about stand up and say this and stand on business, they won't even be around when them sink you. Yeah, man. So, anyways, I'm going to leave them to that because some things in life we don't need to worry about. And here's the reason why we don't need to worry about it because we can't control it either way. So, go out today with this in your mindset. Whatever you cannot control, you don't worry about. Can we worry yourself? Huh? You can't control it. Right? All right. With that said, big up on yourself. Manners and respect to each and every one I know. And I will catch you on another video tomorrow morning right here. God spare my life. I'm feeling good. And I'm hoping I'll be feeling even better tomorrow. Look, I'm telling you the voice still no 100. But it's coming along, right? All right. One love, people. Walk good. And... Think. I'm out. Peace.